play. Hello, everyone. It's me and Alan. <laughs> hey. Um, Alan has his phone over here, and he's going to be, uh, so you guys can see what he's doing. Uh, Do you want to um, connect this conversation to Facebook? I think that someone said that that was going to happen, so that would be fine. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What time is it? 2.59. I see 10. Hold on, it's 3.58. I'm going to wait for 3.01. 3.01? Yeah, give people time. Give people time. Are you muted? Then, it, we're not muted. We're recording. So we're not muted? People can hear us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I muted it, does we do? That's fine. We're going to give it a few minutes to see if anybody else joins us. I hope so. Join us because they don't have the link. But. When does that get the Facebook? Oh, this, yeah. Yeah. Is this the time we put on our aprons? Yes. Okay. Would you like an apron? Don't give him a dirty one. It's your apron. Oh, no, we can give him this one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. With the dress and the yes. pearls. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> Alan has a beautiful apron. It has a dress and pearls and a chest. And <laughs> Look what I have. Do you have a Notre Dame apron or whose was that? I don't know. I can't see. <laughs> yes, it's a Notre Dame apron. I love it very much. <laughs> <laughs> don't Terry Fellbaum is allowing us to be in her kitchen. She is our gracious host today. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm Louisville something. Are you Louisville? Chef's table. Chef's table. Yes. Very Fantastic. Exciting. So who all do we have? We have Ben, Abby, Hen, and then myself yeah. and Moshe. here in Moshe. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And right. me. I'm here too. All right. So I guess we can go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your pan. You can use a nine inch round. That's what I have prepared here. Um, you're going to coat it with a layer of oil and use a paper towel to smear it around just to make sure your cake doesn't stick. Um, if you have parchment paper handy, you can trace the bottom of your pan with a pe with the parchment paper, cut it out and lay it at the bottom. If you do that, it's less likely your cake will stick to the pan. It's a lot, it's very helpful. So I'll give you guys a minute so you can prepare your pans. I know Abby's following along. I believe Hen is also. <laughs> Uh, would aluminum foil work or no? No, you can just use oil, Abby. It'll work just the same. This oil will be fine. Yeah, Oil's just fine. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is using your measuring cup, you're going to Add a tablespoon of vinegar to the bottom of your measuring cup. Once you complete that, you're gonna fill up the rest of it to the one cup mark with your almond milk or soy milk, whatever dairy-free milk you purchased. Uh, that is going to sour your milk for the cake. And we want to do that before we start any of the other processes because you wanna give it a few minutes to sour. Okay. Hang on, let, let us catch up with you now. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is everyone enjoying What it? did you do with the vinegar? You're adding a tablespoon to your measuring cup of vinegar. And how big is the measuring cup? Just one cup or? <laughs> one cup. <laughs> fill the rest of it up with your almond or vegan milk. So one tablespoon of vinegar. Yep. And then the rest is the milk. <laughs> okay, so 
And then did I get the right vinegar? Just distilled vinegar, right? Yep, that's perfectly fine. It's literally just gonna curdle your milk and make it sour so it reacts against the baking soda. That's what's gonna make your cake rise. You already stopped? Yes. Hey, so, hey. We took our nine inch round pan and we coated it with oil. That way your cake wouldn't stick. I added a layer of parchment paper at the bottom because it just gives you an extra layer of protection. So that was our first step there, just preparing your pan. Okay. Oh, let me check if I have a nine inch. Why is the nine inch round? Your hand one is frozen. <laughs> this one? It's just, it has Let's see to Mm -hmm. I've got food on this. You should put, put, bring your drinks. It's really funny watching you adjust the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, Alan, do we just let it sit? Do we mix it at all? Uh, you're not gonna. You're just gonna sit it off to the side. The vinegar will do it. It'll do it to Wow. Um, it's just gonna sit off to the side and curdle. Maybe this. Okay, so after you, sorry, after you oil the pan, you mix the soda. Yeah, so you're gonna, not the soda, so you're gonna take a measuring cup, your one cup measuring mm -hmm. cup, and you're gonna add a tablespoon of your vinegar to it. And then you're gonna, you're going to fill the rest, the rest of it up with your vegan milk. Oh, we're making buttermilk? Yeah, you're making vegan buttermilk. <laughs> Do you have to use vegan milk? No, I just did it, so it was part. Oh, okay. Yeah, I figured if anybody joined us that was kept kosher, they'd be having- You put milk. vinegar in the milk? Yes. Yeah. Just in a bowl? In your measuring cup. So you're adding a tablespoon of vinegar to your one cup measuring oh. cup. And then filling it the rest of the way up with your milk. And then um, it um, I'm looking at you big screen now, and I just noticed your apron. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the apron is excellent. <laughs> uh, one tablespoon of vinegar? Yep. One tablespoon? Of vinegar. tablespoon? <laughs> okay. One tablespoon, right, Alan? What? One tablespoon of vinegar? Correct, one tablespoon of vinegar. We're going to start, I don't know if you can see but it's gonna get thick and chunky. Yeah. yeah, it gets nasty. Yeah, I think it is too. How are we all doing? Good. Good. Okay, I'm cut. You're cut up? Was that sheer? Yeah. Cut up? Yeah, I got the bottom milk going. Good, perfect. So next we're gonna take a medium sized bowl. I have a glass bowl here. And this is going to be for mixing our dry ingredients. So we're gonna mix all of our dry ingredients first. And then we're gonna add our wet ingredients. You know what I did not tell you guys? Can you please preheat your oven to 350 degrees? <laughs> Are we gonna um, add the, the wet ingredients to the dry or the dry to the wet? We're gonna add the dry to the wet. Okay. Speaking of which bowl to, to, to take bigger. Yeah, so if you wanna grab the bigger bowl and have it prepared off to the side, that'll be fine. We're gonna set our ovens to 350 degrees. I forgot to tell you that portion. It's important to have an oven in order to bake your cake. 
<laughs> Gotta do that. Okay, so what are we doing now? Uh, did you preheat your oven to 350 degrees? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So using our measuring cup, one cup measuring cup, we're going to add two cups of flour into our medium sized bowl. I did, I brought my own ingredients. Two cups of flour. We're adding two cups of flour. It's just all purpose flour. No need to go the extra mile and get any other. It's just basic flour. <laughs> go, Sarah. <laughs> all right, so to that, we're going to add a tablespoon of cinnamon. Are you going to see the bit the him, what he's doing? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. We're going to have a tablespoon of cinnamon. Alan. Yes. Um, for first time bakers, you have to explain what the difference between a tablespoon and a teaspoon is. The difference? The tablespoon is bigger than the teaspoon? I'm not sure of the conversion. It's like two and a half, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Three, three to one. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's not the whole thing. And then you use a knife. Are we all caught up? No. No, okay. okay. This is what I was doing. Yeah, but... If I'm uh, low on cinnamon, can I put pumpkin spice instead? Um, if you want to put pumpkin spice, I would do two tablespoons of pumpkin spice because that's basically what we're going to be using. I'm adding nutmeg, nutmeg, allspice, and cloves, and that makes pumpkin spice. Tablespoons of pumpkin spice? Two tablespoons of pumpkin spice because we're going to use... No, it doesn't have cinnamon. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do that. But you need pumpkin spice, so if you put that in, it'll be fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Did, did you say what was after the cinnamon yet? Nope, I was waiting for everyone to catch up. Good, thank you. I like the school plate. Once we put that cinnamon in, we're going to add our half a teaspoon of allspice. We're going to add it directly into the bowl. Great. Right here. Beautiful. And that was the allspice. Yes. Allspice. And then we're going to add the same amount of nutmeg. Um, and then we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Um, a little bit of cloves goes a long way, so don't go over. <laughs> it's a very strong and pungent spice. Okay, and that's all the spices we're going to be adding. Let me know once you guys are caught up. They all um, smell so good. Yeah, it's... It's a very spicy cake. <laughs> very spicy cake. Yeah, I would compare this cake. It's a cake, but it's... In flavor, it's more similar to, uh, say, zucchini bread or banana bread versus like a sweeter cake. It's more spicy, which makes it nice for fall.
Do we all have our spices added? Yep. Fantastic. So next we're gonna add a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt. If you don't have kosher salt, you can use a teaspoon of regular table salt. Either one will work fine. I love. Go back to watching Shrek. All right. So next, we're going to add two teaspoons of our baking soda. If you're worried about your baking soda, if it's fresh or not, a good way to test it is to set a little bit aside and add either a splash of vinegar or some lemon juice to it. If your soda bubbles, that means it's good. If it doesn't bubble, it means you need to buy more. Oh no. You said that two teaspoons? That's yes, two teaspoons of baking soda. Um, what happens if your baking soda is very old? Your cake won't rise as much. Okay, so, so baking soda is the leavening agent that'll cause your cake to rise. That's okay. why a lot of, that's why if you keep kosher, people throw it out during Pesach. It, oh, okay. So how much baking soda? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. Uh, what was the test for the uh, baking soda? If you're worried about it, you can add a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice on the side to it, and if it bubbles, it's fine. Um, if it's not great baking soda, your cake just won't rise as much. It won't be as fluffy. <laughs> um, I've never had I've never had mine go bad. I just know it can go bad. So your baking soda is probably fine. <laughs> and if it, yeah, sorry. Good bubble car. It has an expression date? Yeah. Oh. Oh, mine bubbled. Yeah. yeah. Mine bubbled. <laughs> and it, it's supposed to expire in 2018. <laughs> That's good. It's okay. mine, mine bubbled too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> It's like the experiment you did when you were in elementary school with the volcano and vinegar. Ah. Same thing. Okay. So once you got all those things added, you're just gonna whisk it, to whisk it together good and make sure our dry ingredients are nice and combined. Is there any baking powder in it that I missed or no baking powder? Oh, just baking soda. Okay. I just made an applesauce instead of buying one. That, that works fine. You can also, if you wanted, you can add diced apples to it. That would be fine. Um, we're going to add dried currants. That's what I have in my pantry. Any kind of dried fruit or nuts would work great with the recipe. Sarah doesn't like nuts, which is why we're not adding nuts to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like sand, right? It looks a little bit like a gray tinted sand. Or like a, yeah. It's because the spices. Smells good. good. That's what we want. We want it to smell good. Um, so we're going to set that aside. We're done with our dry ingredients now. And next we'll move on to our wet ingredients, which we're going to use the bigger bowl for. Right? All right. So we're going to first add two eggs. Bowl. 
you whisking the egg? Yep, I'm whisking it up just a little bit to break it off. To that, we're going to add one cup of sugar. We're going to add our one cup of buttermilk directly to this bowl. It's going to look thick and chunky, but that's what we want. Is it? It is. And then... One and a half cups of your applesauce. Uh, can you slow down just a second? Yep, you're perfectly fine. Okay, so one cup of sugar. Yep. Okay. That's a lot of sugar. All right, one cup of sugar, and then what was after that? I didn't put in a full cup. And then, so a cup of sugar and then the buttermilk, right? Correct, yes, your buttermilk. And then was anything after that or no? After that, you're gonna add your one and a half cups of applesauce. He hasn't done it yet. I have not added it yet. Okay. That is the next step. What's after the buttermilk? Your one and a half cups of applesauce. One half cups of applesauce. Not yet. Have we all added our applesauce? Yep. Yes. Right. So our final wet ingredients is going to be a third a cup of oil. Add that directly in there. And Sarah wants to mix it together. So right. I'm going to step aside and allow her to mix. I'll mix it. Third cup of oil. You guys enjoying your day? Doing great. Good. It's a nice sunny day. All right, it's probably good. Yeah, it makes it. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> You've done your duty. All right, so next we're going to add our dry ingredients to our ingredients. I got to get my curls on. Everyone ready to move on? Are we ready for the next step? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it bad to mix the wet to the dry? Is that bad? Um, it's been a, it's easier to over mix if you do it that way. You're also going to have dry ingredients that stick to the side of your bowl. Okay. Um, it's not a huge deal. Wait a minute. Maybe. The last thing was for a cup of oil. One third cup of oil. Uh, is there any brown sugar? No. In it? No. Brown sugar is the frosting. The frosting. Oh, okay. Do uh, you recommend using a, a mixer? For the frosting, yeah, we're going to use a mixer. Ooh. Um, you don't have, for the cake, you don't have to. I mix it with my hand all the time. It's just, you have to have a very, your hand has to be able to deal with it. <laughs> um, so we're going to gradually start adding our dry ingredients to our wet. Um, I add about a third at a time and then mix and that'll keep you from over mixing. How much at a time? Just a third of it? A third of it, yeah. You don't have to measure it. Just you don't have to measure it, just eyeball. It's going the other way. You know, be surprised how dark this gets once you bake it too. It's going to tur turn really dark. He's not, he's not there yet. Mm 
<laughs> You're just going to mix it till you notice all the flour is combined. Wow, it's really good. Mm -hmm. So are we all caught up to that point? Have we mixed our... Uh, just a little, like maybe one more minute. All right, you're fine. No worries. <laughs> First time I've ever made a cake from scratch. Really? Really? Yeah. I make cakes. I refuse to use pasta. I'm a little bit of a cake snob. I will admit it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna take a, if we have dried fruit or nuts, we're gonna go ahead and add that. Um, I'm just gonna eyeball half a cup here. That's, you can add more if you'd like, you can add less. I'm just gonna add half a cup of currants. I like using currants because they, they taste similar to a raisin, but they're about a third of the size, so they mix in a lot better. You don't have a giant chunk of raisin and a piece of your cake. It's just these. What about chocolate things. chips if we have them? Um, I would not add chocolate chips just because okay. they can melt. Okay. And add to your. It might take longer. I've never added chocolate chips, so I just keep bring anything. You do? Oh well, Terry Feldbaum, our local expert here, <laughs> says that you'll be fine adding chocolate chips if you would like. Just know there is a, a, a caramel frosting going on top. Yeah, there is a really sweet caramel frosting going on top. But if you're making it hard, it's going to go hard. That would be the key question. Yeah. All right, so those are added. Are we all cut up? Or is that you adding your chocolate chips? Yeah. Okay. Are you there, Abby? Have you added your chocolate chips yet, Abby? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to stick to the recipe. <laughs> so we're all caught up? Yes. Yep. All right. So we're going to add our batter to our prepared cake pan. And you're going to want to make sure you only fill it up about two thirds of the way because your cake is going to rise. If you over, uh -huh. your cake will go over the edges. <laughs> Once, I've noticed from using this recipe is it does yield a little extra. So if you have a muffin tin or something you'd like to add, it's probably enough for two muffins. You can do that too. 
But you're just filling it about two thirds. Do you want a muffin too? Sure, if you guys want to use those. Do you want to use it? I'm, I'm going to head out. I can't wait to see the pictures of the finished cakes. Enjoy. All right, feel better. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. But do we need to pan them? Oh, good idea. Pan them, please. All right. Please. So once you have your nine inch round, two thirds of the way filled, I tap it a little bit, just get rid of the excess air bubbles. Um, and then we're going to put it in a preheated oven that is set to 350 degrees. And we're going to bake that for about an 45 minutes to an hour. Um, just keep it up because it does, a lot of times the oven can cook faster or slower, just depending if your oven keeps the temperature. So just keep an eye on it. If it's done, you'll be able to insert a butter knife and it'll come out clean. Or a toothpick, or whatever you have around the house. Your toe, use your toe, just dip it in there. If it comes out clean, you're good. Uh -huh. <laughs> you might run into other problems though, like sticking your toe in a burning piece of cake. Oh, it's not time yet. Oh, it's not time yet. <laughs> I can't wait till right. <laughs> All right. So give us a few minutes. We're going to set up our station. We're going to work on the frosting next. Yay! It's my favorite frosting. Just putting that up. Okay. Please hold. Listen to this not music. And what's a good Rosh Hashanah song? Mm. Um, how's it going? Shana Tova Shana Ba Anika Payarima. Shana tova lecha ba shana tova lachima shana tova shana tova I love that song. I know I don't know the exact words, but I just make them up, you know. Shana You have a good singing voice, Ben. Alan, how how much time do you bake the cake? He said 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. I'm unmuted you. Is there any other Rosh Hashanah songs? Just the apple in the honey maker. <laughs> Wait, Sarah, we can't hear you. Oh, shut. <laughs> Does, um... Yeah. How does that one go? How does that one go? 
ילדים בחופשה, יש לך חברות אופסת בין הבית לבין הדוב. It's actually funny because it says, the song says, um, Next year, we'll sit on the balcony and count uh, flying birds. And then people were laughing uh, when they were quarantining. <laughs> and they were like, hey, mm -hmm. this, <laughs> it's oh like a song. Like this. <laughs> this is all we yeah, have like to do. We sit on the porch the and <laughs> counting birds. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> And it's not that fun. <laughs> yeah. My uncle made up a song, a Rosh Hashanah song. Um, it's not that good, though. <laughs> You're right. I mean, it's like, for some reason, are you supposed to, like, drink alcohol in Rosh Hashanah? What? So it goes like this, like, a, on Rosh Hashanah, oi, Rabbi, I pray I don't lose control. That's all it is. You just, it has like verses, I don't know. It's not like not getting too drunk. It, it sounds like a drinking song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We get the mixer ready for the frosting. Yeah. What do we need for the frosting? You're gonna need your butter, your brown sugar, butter, and brown milk. sugar, and milk. Or your, or your um, vegan milk choice. Okay. I mean, that's a choice. We'll put it is down. The, <laughs> is the bottle melted or room temperature? No, room temperature. If you don't have oh, it at room, hard. if you don't have it at room temperature, um, you can soften it by leaving it out for a couple hours, or you can grate it. You sure? It's a good part. Okay. I have another bowl. Nine. All right. So if you're Margarine, or this is a buttery, vegan, buttery, vegan stick. buttery stick. Why? Our pan. <laughs> We're just going to start mixing it on low. Oh, yeah. Andy, do you and it's how much again? A half cup of butter? Over. One stick of butter. One your, stick of butter? Which is a half a cup. You have one of these. Half a cup of butter? Half a cup of your butter, yes. Okay. One stick equals a half a cup. And we're just going to cream it in the bottom of our pan. Yeah. Try not to try to make it so that they can hear him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, you shall mute. <laughs> well, you should probably mute it. We're going to mute it. We're going to mute it. So we're just going to cream this into the bottom of our pan. But it's going to be loud, so we're going to mute it. And it's just the butter, right? Yep, just the butter for now.
Your mix is going, that's a good sign. Yeah. All right, so once our butter is creamed, we're gonna add a half a cup of brown sugar to this and keep creaming once it's added. And you wanna wanna pack that brown sugar in to make sure it's a full half a cup. It just means press it down. It just means press it down in your cup. Make sure you're actually filling the cup because this brown sugar can get quite airy. And we're going to continue mixing. What if I don't have a mixer? Uh, you can mix it by hand, but it's a little difficult. Or if you have a, like a hand mixer that you use, you can use that. Will this help me? I can't. Hold okay. on. Um, a blender. Blender? I uh, don't think a blender would work. Do you have a food processor? This is the same as a blender, right? You could do it by hand. You can also, there's a way to heat it up on the stove so it all melts together that's too. Just but that's really difficult. another step. Yeah, um, you can use, I, I would use your whisk and a hand, but it is going to be more difficult. Or a fork. I see what you mean with the airiness of brown sugar. Yeah, it gets really airy, so you have to pack it in there. Uh, make sure when you're mixing your brown sugar in that you're taking your spatula down the sides because it will stick on the side and not mix in evenly. So you're going to have to pause and go back in. How's everyone doing? Great. I know Hen's working on mixing. Sheer, how are you doing? Can you do it with a whisk? She was, I mean. I'm um, trying to cream the butter, but I think like the bowl is too low on my mixer. Mm. Oh, um, do you I have like a bowl? If, if your bowl is too low, do you have a hand mixer? No, I have like a bowl lift mixer, like like yours, a KitchenAid. Yeah. There a... There's no lift on the side? No, I lifted it up, but uh, I think you need to kind of like adjust the pedal. It's still not reaching? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you'll have to, so this one doesn't quite reach all the way to the bottom either. That's why yeah. I have to stop and then put everything you it. down. You just scrape everything down in the middle and then you can try again and keep that process okay. going and eventually you'll, you'll get it to whip up. Okay, I'll do that. Did you put the milk inside too or? Not yet. Oh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding the confectioner's sugar in the milk gradually until we get the proper consist consistency of an icing. Oh. <laughs> 
How many? How much confections? Um, it's kind of you do it by eye because you have to see how thick you yeah, want it. Yeah, you're gonna use your eye to see how thick it is. Um, I would expect to probably use a cup or two. Um, this is a two pound bag and I'm probably gonna use half of this if I had to guess. Um, icing is one of those tricky things where you kind of just eyeball it. Um, <laughs> then you save it for the next day. Good dip with apples dipped yeah. in it. <laughs> Just gonna set up differently depending on temperature and stuff like that. Okay, so what are we putting in the the powdered sugar or the milk? So we've not added any of that yet. So far, this is just butter and brown sugar. Okay, I got them there. I was waiting for everyone to catch up to make sure we're going at the right speed. Are we caught up? I think I only have one cup of ice of the powdered sugar. Um, I wouldn't. If you only have a cup of powdered sugar, I would probably hold off on adding the milk and it might set up properly. You're just going to have a very buttery icing. I wouldn't okay. add any liquid to it because it's not going to, you're going to have a really runny frosting if you do that. Okay. Does that make sense? See how it goes. Yeah. yeah. Add what you have, see how thick it is. If you need to thin it out, add a tiny bit of liquid. Um, you just don't want to add because it will get runny real quick. What's the consistency if the frosting is supposed to be like? Like, um, similar to a buttercream, maybe not yeah. quite as stiff. Does that make sense? I know. <laughs> I never made buttercream. Um, you're going to want it to be somewhat firm. You're not going to want it to run. So like when you stick the spatula in it, it shouldn't come off. See, like this, it, I mean, we haven't added anything else, but this is, the, you want it similar to this. Where you're going to be able uh -huh. to cake with it and it's not going to run off the sides. Kind of like a pate, like chopped liver pate consistency. <laughs> That's how it looks. Mom, I've never made pate? that, so I don't know. <laughs> is the frosting like the consistency of a pate? Yeah, I mean, if you want to spread it, it's easier to lose Yeah, so yes, it's similar to a pate. If you want it to spread more easily, you're going to want it to be softer, so you're going to want to add more liquid. Okay. But don't yeah. add it like a ton. But don't like add a ton. I'm a gonna splash add, at a time. I'm adding it a tablespoon at a time once we get to that point. Of the milk? Yeah. And if you only have one cup of powdered sugar, I might not even add a tablespoon. Um, I think I have only one cup. Okay. So I'm gonna add I'm gonna add my powdered sugar in. I'm adding a half cup at a time. I'm gonna add Powdered sugar. I'm going to mix this in. And then once you have your powdered sugar incorporated, you're going to add just a splash of your cold milk. Add a tablespoon. And you're going to continue mixing. With a mixer, it, it's, it looks completely different. Yours looks different? How much powdered sugar did you put? A half of a cup.
Do you want to text Sarah a picture and I can look at it? That might be helpful. I might be able to help. It's hard to help virtually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try our best. But I will try my best to help you. Um, so we've mixed in that tablespoon of cold milk. Next step, I'm going to add another half a cup of powdered sugar. And we're just going to keep alternating until we have the amount and the consistency we want. Tablespoon of milk. The fence in your picture. If you guys feel intimidated about making the frosting with ice syrup box, I just, I don't like store bought frosting. But it's just up to your preference. If you don't want to take the time to make frosting, you don't have to. Alright, so we have that liquid dissolved in there. I'm going to go ahead and add another half cup of my confection with sugar. So we're at uh, two tablespoons of milk and a cup and a half of your powdered sugar so far. Okay. You didn't know. Okay. 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 So we have eight minutes left. Do you want to cut it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know what it looks like when it's done. It's dripping off it. Ask someone else if they can set it down. <laughs> I'm going to say this consistency, this consistency is pretty good. So we have two tablespoons of liquid and a cup and a half of confectioner's sugar is what we did. I might add a tiny bit more confectioner's sugar because I don't want it to be runny. I'm sorry, you said you're going to add a little bit of what? I'm going to add a little more confectioner's sugar just to make sure once it's on the cake it doesn't run at all. Okay. I I knew that frosting was bad for you, but I never have made it before, so I'm like, whoa. <laughs> it's sugar, it's and sugar and butter. Sugar and butter. Sometimes not. Yeah. There's, there are frosting recipes you can use that uh, use egg, though. Um, they are more complicated, so just to say that. Uh, but if you wanted to look into it, you could use a uh, egg-based frosting. It's also bad for it uses it. no matter what you're using, it's gonna use a ton of sugar. It's like the main ingredient. So I'm adding another quarter cup of sugar in here just because I want it to be thicker. Thank you. 
Oh, yeah, you can take it off. Sarah's going to show you our cakes that are baking. Oh. Whoa. How's everybody else's looking? They smell good. Looks like cake. <laughs> hey, were you able to figure out your frosting dilemma? Um, no. Do you want to send Sarah a picture to see if we can help? Mm, I'm not sure if I want to do frosting, actually. Okay. It's really sugary, and I know yeah. how you feel about sugar. I know you don't not like that of a sugar person. No. You like the cake so though. Like the, cake, the cake, cake is a spice cake. It's not a. Yeah, spice. yeah. Really good no, cake. the cake, the cake will be good. You want the spoon? Mm -hmm. No, I got it. You got it. Okay, I'm thinking about doing the paper cutting. Uh, this is the Aaron. What? I was just asking. Yeah. Is, is anyone going to do the paper cutting event? I'm going to the paper cutting event. Great. I'm excited. Me too. <laughs> I'm going to go figure out how I'm going to print off a template. Once I'm done here, because <laughs> my printer is not working at home. Uh, so, Shira, you're asking about consistency. Yeah, like it's it's thicker, but it's kind of grainy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the graininess is from the brown sugar. Uh, mm -hmm. the way to get around that is if in advance you want to cook your brown sugar on the stove top to make it a syrup, you can do that. Um, you just mm -hmm. have time to cool. Because if you so, don't, if you don't just whisking it small is not going to help it? No, no. Okay, so like not, not to use it? Or is it usable? No, it's usable. It's, usable. it's fine. It's just green because of brown sugar. It oh. tastes good. Yeah, it's going to taste, so it's going to taste like a, it's going to have a caramely taste to it from that brown sugar. Yeah, it's, it's super sweet. Yeah, it's like, yeah, and it's... It's like caramelly. Yeah, and it's going to basically add to your cake. Our cake is not very sweet. Mm -hmm. This frosting is going to give it that sweetness to that spice. It's, yeah. Um, yeah. So, move on to the next step here. Do you have a What? Do you put it on the cake when it's hot or after it No, so you're going to want your cake to completely cool before you frost it. If your cake is not cooled before you frost your cake, your frosting is going to melt and it's going to run off the sides and off the top. Right. You're just going to have a mess if you, wait, if you don't wait for your cake to cool. So, Alan, how long do you bake the cake for? Also, if your cake is not cool, it'll crumble while you're icing it. How long do you bake the cake for? Uh, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it could finish sooner. It just depends how hot your oven runs and if your oven's calibrated. I don't know. The, if your oven's calibrated, it should take about an hour. Um, if you think your cake might be close to done, you can put a toothpick in it or the pointy end of a knife. And if it comes out clean, that means your cake is done. It'll be about this color here, really dark. Oh, wow. Nice. Yes, I baked this last night. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're gonna over here. 
how long should we wait for it to cool before we ice it? Like, we want for it to be like soft, cool to touch. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. want it to be cool to touch. I definitely like if you're wanting. What I would normally do is I bake the cake the day before and ice it the next day. Wow. Um, but if you want to just let it sit for a couple hours, it'd be fine, I think. Just as long as you're soft. I it. put that. Well, this is what our cake looks like when it's out of the oven. Nice and brown. And dry. Dry. I put that like the little, that what, what was left of it in a smaller tea. Yeah, I put mine. And I think it might be ready. Like, is this the color? Um, no. I know mine are not, my, the smaller ones I put in are nowhere near done. I would say they probably need another 20 minutes. Um, it also depends. Mine are a little bit larger, so if you use muffin tins, they might be done. And if you wanted to test it with a toothpick or a knife, if it comes out clean, they're done. Yeah, the one on the nine-inch pen is still the 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 toothpick still comes out wet, but yeah, the nine-inch pen is definitely still cooking. Why? The nine-inch one definitely still needs quite a bit of time. Yeah, but the, I did another one from the leftovers. And it looks done. Nine inch. It looks pretty dark and uh, I don't want to overcook it. Yeah, I know ours are probably about a four inch. The extra we use is about a four inch cake. And those aren't quite done yet. So if yours is smaller than that, it could be done. Again, my test is if the knife comes out clean, it means it's done. Um, to frost it, we're just going to layer our frosting on top. And go around with our spatula. I always start in the middle and then push it out to the sides. Um, depending on what your preference is, you could cake, you could ice the sides, you can just ice the top. It just depends on the look you're going for. For this cake, I'm just going to ice the top. And then we're going to eat it next. Um, <laughs> I think. You guys want to see my icing? This is my oh, icing. She's making a party. Did you make the icing with a uh, hand mixer or mixer? Yeah, so if you wanted to use a hand mixer for your frosting, you can do that. That's um, what I did. Yeah, you don't have to use a stand mixer. Um, if you make sure your margarine is soft enough, you can definitely use your arms. I've done that before. Um, I personally don't use a hand mixer a lot in my house, uh, partially because I don't like the extra cleanup. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I should put the icing in the fridge while I wait for it to cool. Yeah. So you can put the icing in the fridge while you wait for it to cool. What you're going to want to do before you frost it is you're going to want to whip it again. Okay. Like you're not going to want to put it directly on there and you're going to want it to get to room temperature before frosting. If you put cold frosting on your cake, it's not going to spread. Oh, okay. Same with, yeah. This was so good. And now I made a cake. <laughs> Alan, you were awesome at teaching it. Nice work. This should be like a maybe a once a month thing, at least for me, so I can learn how to cook. <laughs> I, like, I, like I like cooking with people. I definitely need to learn to be a better instructor. I think there's some things I could be better at. But I think for our first video, I've had fun with you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see how all your cakes turned out. Feel free to send us pictures. Send us pictures. We'll do. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you guys have any other questions, do or do you guys want to share recipes? I know Moshe gave us. I some. saw Moshe's. He gave us a second one. He sent us two more. So we have Simus. Sent us Simus and two apple cookies. 
Yeah. Do you guys have any favorite recipes that you use for Rosh Hashanah? So, hi, Ellen. Hi. Hi, everybody. So I sent um, my mother's wonderful apple cake recipe, which is diff very different. It's more like a, a, a big nut bread. And um, we usually, she usually made it in a bunt pan. And so it's made with oil and a lot of walnuts and um, six cups of fresh apples. So oh. it's oh. And it's um, the most wonderful thing. But then also Moshe's sister-in-law, Elise, from her book. And so you can see it, it has all the stains from being copied. <laughs> um, That's how you know it's a good recipe. Yeah, yeah, it's basically the same recipe, very similar. And then a Moshe, we didn't send that one yet, but Moshe's mother made the most wonderful honey cake. And, you know, we didn't like dry honey cake, which was the tradition in my family, so the kids never liked it. But in his family, his mother had a moist honey cake recipe, which is so, so we'll send that to you too. Ah, is this so coffee in it? Coffee? I saw a recipe similar to this that had coffee in it too. Yes. I have a question for the first, the Rosalind. Yes, that's my is, mother. Is that a quarter cup of mango juice I see on there? Um, uh, let's I see. I it's mango or if it's orange juice. Orange. Okay. <laughs> she figured out, my mother was a, an award-winning baker. She, she figured out that if she added a little orange juice, that was really, the, that did the trick. Some, some, apple, some of these apple cake recipes use vanilla and some don't. But it's more like, as I say, it's more like the consistency of this is, is much more like, say, a carrot cake or carrot bread or banana bread type thing. Okay, and you're putting mm -hmm. a bunt can, bunt, bunt pan? Yeah, but she would make it in a bunt pan mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any um, frosting. Yeah, it looks good. It's really, really delicious. I'm gonna, I'm still gonna make this for yeah. sure. <laughs> Does anybody else have recipes for us so I can, can share? I can share the recipes with everyone. Yeah, the plan afterwards is for me to send it to the group. So we can all benefit from each other's recipes. Yeah, I have nothing, but I'm really happy I learned how to make this. <laughs> does your does your Abby, does your mom have any favorite recipes that she uses for the holidays? Just curious. Mm, I have an idea. So she does a really good uh, chicken noodle soup, and I'm gonna try to learn that. Okay. Maybe we can do that next. Cooking's uh, yeah, that'd be okay. good. That'd be fun. I could even have like my mom do it. I don't know. <laughs> that would be great. That's fantastic. So I'm going to send you guys another uh, video, demonstration video. Speaking of moms, my mom is 92 years old. She lives in Israel. But this will, this will not be a cooking demonstration. It'll be a sukkah decoration demonstration. Oh, yes. That's fun. And uh, in our family, our tradition was to make sukkah birdies by blowing out eggshells and then uh, creating little birdies out of them using Play-Doh and um, um, crepe, crepe paper and spices for eyes and nose and that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll send that later, later today for you guys. Can you even buy Play-Doh anymore? Yeah. You can always make Play-Doh out of flour. That's true. Are we back? Hello. Sorry. We lost connection for Our a second. My Wi-Fi went out for a second. Oh. So you're making birdies out of eggshells? Uh, uh, you blow out, you, what, you'll see it in the demonstration. You, okay. uh, you, you take a little knife and you poke a little hole in it and you have to blow out the egg yolk. Okay. The egg, the whole egg. The whole egg, yeah. Okay. That's fun. Mm -hmm. I definitely need some sofa decorating tips. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Ken um, helped me last year. Yeah. And Sarah. Sarah <laughs> helped me I'll last share. year. We took a full day to make decorations. <laughs> so <laughs> that was I, fun. My, my suggestion is this was such a wonderful event. And I know so many more people would have enjoyed this. Uh, I, I'd like to I'd like to think about ways in which we can be a little bit more effective in promoting the young adults. Mm -hmm. Uh, because this is this was absolutely phenomenal. Really, a, a good time.
Can you do like a, can somebody do like a screenshot or something to get a picture? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Of all the people, like you're demonstrating, the, um, <clears throat> and you're, you're demonstrating and then it shows everybody in the gallery or something like that, or a few pictures you could put in your newsletter or website or something. I'm going to take a screenshot. I know, but she wants you to show, you're demonstrating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Please hold, he has to turn his phone back on. <laughs> Wait, what am I doing? Oh, uh, I see. Yes. I think this type of event will be really good for the winter time too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can maybe yeah. do like a sukkah hop, it's Zoom okay. sukkah hop type okay. thing. That you could go from two different people's sukkahs via Zoom. Okay. We're gonna. Where's the lovely? You didn't turn on the um, camera. Mm. Maybe take a screenshot when everybody has their cakes out of the oven. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll so do make that. sure when your cakes are done, you send those pictures to share. We can share them. Because that will be a promotion for the next events. I can also send them to Emily and she can post them on her Facebook or something. How's, a, how's everyone's cake looking? What size look like? It's all good. Mm. They're very dark. Mm hmm. They look really good. Yeah. So if you want to, they ours look, looks like it's nearly done. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, so if you want to use a toothpick and see if it comes out clean, go ahead. If not, I think it might take about. Yeah. Two minutes. I'm test. I'm testing. Mine's definitely done. Oh, yeah. Mine is done as well. We're done. Okay. There we go. Great. While we have cakes, once those cakes cool, they'll look like this. They'll, when you frost <laughs> them, they'll look like that. Just make sure before you frost them, you allow it to cool. A really important step. Yes. Because if not, your cake isn't going to be pretty. It's going to fall apart. All right, do you guys have any questions? Abby, do you have any cake? Is your cake done, Abby? It had just a little bit on the on the knife, so I'm gonna wait like five more minutes. Yeah, mine too. Is that your share? What? Is that your cake I just saw? Yeah, and mine out. It looks very nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really good. Good. Okay. Nice. It might be an hour. Fantastic! So exciting! I'm glad we got to bake cakes together. <laughs> <laughs> So if we have nothing else, I'm going to say we should do this again soon. Great. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Fun. Um, and I'll leave you guys to your cakes. All right. Thank you so Thank you. much. You did awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Bye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.